Now, even though nothing was found, the investigation is still ongoing and the lockers here at Peoria High continue to be searched. And that damage extends all the way across the street here. As you can see behind me, broken glass, windows blown out of these buildings. Yeah, 25,000 of these rubber ducks are being labeled. As you can see behind me here, they have quite the operation going. We just heard a moment ago over the loudspeaker that that Allegiant Air flight from Las Vegas just arrived here at Peoria International Airport. I'm in the Toyland section here at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And gosh, it's hard not to feel like a kid again out here. And that's just really the magic of this event. But it doesn't stop there for Vice, who will have to answer to a judge here at the Tazewell County Courthouse. He now faces a Class B misdemeanor charge. It got very emotional, as you can understand, seeing the sight of this plastic bathtub that kept this family safe while the tornado rolled through last night. Based on preliminary findings, the remains found just across the street from where I'm standing right now are consistent with that of a 13-year-old adolescent male. This line of voters waiting to get in and cast their ballot before they head into work this morning. We've seen a lot of customers get on trying to pay. They aren't aware that it's free rides all day today. And the damage, just to give you an idea of how powerful this storm was, the damage actually extends all the way through the car, but first, hundreds of homeowners in Galesburg are breathing a sigh of relief tonight. The city stepping in to help fix a problem with lead in the drinking water. Alyssa? Yeah, Paul, around 8 Sunday morning, police say that suspect, 23 year old Savion Williams, ransacked an outbuilding at the Sheridan Road Nursery and broke into Moxie's resale shop just next door. The dog days of summer are officially upon us. It's already starting to feel hot and sticky out here and it's early on in the morning. Now it's just going to get hotter as the day goes on. I'm outside of the Peoria Police Station right now, which is going to be serving as a cooling center. Two people have been transported to a local hospital after a lightning strike at the Summer Camp Music Festival. In as Chilicon. you can see behind me, the stage is set. Bernie Sanders set to take that stage around 10 this morning. That's where we begin tonight. I'm Alyssa Paldo. Chad Tarpley is the owner of CNT Siding and Construction. He says he told the Dragon Dumps Waste Management he would be late on payment. That's when he says they dumped someone else's garbage on his father's lawn. Yeah, Lindsay, I spoke to Rachel Potts this morning. She's a spokesperson for Caterpillar, and she tells me the company wants the community to know that Peoria will still remain its hometown. Brooklyn Ann Dracky and her mom have their routine down. On Thursday mornings, they wait at the edge of the driveway for the garbage truck to make its way down their street, rain or shine. They smile and wave, and it just so happens that the garbage man rushes out of his meetings to get to their neighborhood to do the very same thing. Brooklyn, what's today, sweetheart? The garbage man. For most, garbage day isn't exactly a day you get dressed up for, but Thursdays are a special day for three year old Brooklyn and Jackie. <laughs> What started as a fascination with the flashing lights and the horn, anxiously waiting, smiling, and waving as the truck made its way into the neighborhood, turned into a highly anticipated meeting with the guy inside the truck, a year in the making. The first time she met him, it was, I think to her, like meeting a celebrity because she was just kind of in awe over him and that he was actually standing at the end of our driveway, like the garbage man. That man is Delvar Dobson. Turns out he also was looking forward to seeing the little girl. I say my day really starts when I pull into uh, this neighborhood and I see Brooklyn. Every morning I ask her what she dreamt about and it's always Santa. And today it was the garbage man. Sorry, Which Santa. Is. <laughs> Regardless of the title or the position, it's about recognizing your gift and serving it to the world. But I believe this is my life work and this is what I was born to do, to give just a piece of uh, that uh, kindness. As for the little girl and her superhero sanitation specialist, it's an unlikely friendship that will last far beyond garbage day. See you, Brooklyn. So cute. Now, Dobson is also a mentor to children. He says other children in the community also run out to see the smiling garbage man, and it's how he knows he's fulfilling his life's mission. Yeah, Paul and Evelyn, after several months in the hospital and rehab, Paul and Valerie Litton's bodies have healed. But now they're turning their focus on rebuilding in the same spot the explosion happened. Five months ago, and still somewhat emotional. 
Looking at this new construction, nestled on a quiet stretch of Farmdale Road in rural Washington, it's hard to imagine what's happened there. I remember uh, the sensation of falling, and I, I thought it was just that dream where you're falling and you can't catch yourself, you know. It was just before 2 a.m. on August 24th when Paul and Valerie Litton woke up to a loud boom. I was rudely awakened from the dream by hitting the ground uh, and facing then the back of the house. I was outside. The Littons were thrown out of bed and into the air, landing as far as 50 feet away from their home before it burst into flames. I knew that we needed to get away from it, so I started yelling for her, hey, we need to roll. You know, we got to roll away, you know, from the heat. Sorry. The couple amazingly survived. Both had broken bones. Valerie had burns on up to 60% of her body. Nearly six months later, they're back to work and chose to rebuild in the same spot. We thought about whether it would be painful or not to rebuild um, out there. But uh, yeah, we, we love it out there, though. It's a beautiful spot. A new place to build new memories, but the Littons say that night in August is one they'll never forget, and their story of survival will fill their new home with gratitude. We're just grateful and, you know, just happy, you know, that, that knowing that it could have been a lot worse. You know, and very thankful. Yeah, Paul Terry Burnside attends every murder stand down. He runs a mentorship group to keep students away from violence, but none of that worked to stop the gunplay from affecting his own family Wednesday night. The shooting and car crash that followed at Martin Luther King and Hightower in Peoria involved his own family. I'm so happy that this is just minor little things, baby. You don't have to worry. Mommy is okay. A mother's words to her young son after being caught in the crossfire Wednesday night. Tiara Burnside and her three year old and another mother and her child were returning from a trip to the grocery store when a shooter took aim at their car. The guy just approached the vehicle, looked in, and started shooting. You know, two women, two children. That's the hardest guy. Burnside was shot in the side, and as the car she was in sped away to avoid the gunfire, it was involved in a crash, injuring the two children in the back seat. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it keeps me focused, it keeps me grounded, it just encourages me all the more to do more for my community. Terry Burnside is Tierra's father. He's also a familiar voice against violence in the community. It's a cause close to his heart that's only becoming closer. This is the second time I've been a victim. I had a son get shot. Uh, a couple years ago. Wednesday night, Burnside rushed to the scene at Martin Luther King and Hightower to help, something he often does, but he didn't expect to find his own family there. You know, I tell a lot of people, don't wait to hit your doorstep to get involved. You know, I need to be concerned about my neighbor's children, my, my family's children. You know, it's, at the end of the day, we just need to be more concerned about our community. Burnside says this is a fight he can't win alone. We need a more collective effort on our community to do more band together, collaborate more. You know, we've been working out a lot of silos. Let's get out of the silos and let's join hands. Let's make a safer Peoria.